online big because um, you know the the what the online is starting to become a bigger and bigger factor in how people are finding businesses and doing research. And um, what we're seeing is you know approximately 80 to 85 percent of all traffic online is starting at a search engine and then moving into the actual sites themselves. So you know you're you're talking about getting. The, having the potential to get in front of 80 to 85 percent of all relevant traffic looking for your type of business if this is done right. Um, I am getting a little bit of static now. Um, so with that being said, um, John, do you, do you think we're about ready to um, start moving into kind of some of the the tactics and just what we can do to, to really, I guess, um, drive that kind of exposure? Yeah, I think that's fine. Um, if uh, the the audio on my end is pretty good, but uh, if it uh, gets so that um, it, it's not sounding good, uh, you can just go to the um, uh, participant tab and mute all um, um, at any point. Okay. Yeah. So sounds good to me. Um, so I'll I'll leave it. I'll leave it. Um, Unmuted for the time being, but um, you know, if, if there's any if there's any issues, um, please feel free to speak up as well for everyone listening, and you know, we'll make sure that we we get out any um, unnecessary background noise if needed. Um, so that being said, um, you know, I'll, I'll get started and just kind of go over some of some of the basics and just I try I try to be fairly high level. Some of this stuff may be a bit complex. Um, I've left some time at the end to ask questions, and you know, my my hope is that you can come away with this and understand a bit better around things you can do to drive traffic to your site. If there's any questions, concerns at the end, you know, maybe maybe we can we can talk about some specific examples and try to make them a bit more relatable to um, you know your specific businesses. So um, a few things that I wanted to to cover today was just kind of the search landscape and to give you a better idea of, you know, what's going on with the search engines and, you know, how, how things are working to to really how people are actually getting in front of businesses, you know, in this day and age, how the search engines work, um, how what you can do to make your site more likely to be found by the search engines, um, how you would go about finding the right types of keywords that would be relevant to your business and drive the right kind of traffic to your to your site. And then just some strategies around link building, which is a big factor in actually driving free traffic from the search engines to your site. Yeah, I feel uh, I'm sorry? Uh, Matt, I think that's just some background noise. And um, you might want to mute all and then uh, um, maybe just unmute me. Um, and then at any point, if you want to unmute anybody, you can click on them and do that individually. Sure. Um, is there a way for people to um, type in questions as well? Yeah, they can. They can uh, type that in into the chat box. Um, so you'll uh, kind of have to keep an eye on that chat box too. Okay. So I, I don't right. have the privileges to mute all. So I don't know if you can just go ahead and do that for me. Sure, I can. Here goes. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, so moving on, um, search marketing landscape. Um, so kind of what I mentioned at the beginning of um, of this presentation is, you know, there's two different types of searches. There's the paid searches and the organic searches. And what I, what I found from all the, the time I've been doing online marketing is that, um, you know, there's a lot of emphasis on paid search. People are spending literally tens of thousands of dollars every month trying to buy keywords for people to get in front of. And, you know, there's there's much less emphasis on the organic side which um, obviously does does a couple things. It provides some. Um, I mean, it it serves as being a, having a lot of potential because there's a, probably a lot of your competitors that are ignoring that field, and at the same time, it gives you the opportunity to spend time building up natural search listings that are going to stay there and going to make the search engines consistently drive traffic to your site without having to pay for every single click that's going to your site. So I think like that's a big benefit over you know the organic type of search marketing versus the paid type where you have to buy every single click that's coming through to your site so that you know you're never cost 
the the effort you put into it, you never are, you know, you know, gaining to a point where you could potentially be saving yourself money over the long term, even though it may take some time up front. So here's something that a lot of people also tend to ignore is the fact that, you know, while there's so much money being spent on the paid side, only about 10% of all clicks are being driven by the actual sponsored links, while 90% of clicks are being driven by the actual organic side. So that's even more of a, a baseline to be to be judging the types of time and energy and cost you're spending to actually be marketing to these search engines. And I feel like you know we're we're getting to a model now where it's getting harder and harder to ignore the um, the organic searches versus versus just trying to buy clicks going to your site. Um, to give you some ideas around um, kind of how how the different positions are affecting the amount of traffic being driven to your site. Um, you can take a look here and see just the breakdown of how much traffic is actually occurring at each position. And as you can see, you know, if you get into the number one position at Google, 42% of most of the clicks being driven by the search engine will be going to your site specifically. If you drop down to number two position, you're dropping all the way down to about the 12% of clicks. So this speaks to how important it is and how much of a um, difference it can make by actually getting to the number one position versus the number three or four position. And um, basically, you know, that's why, in, from my perspective, a lot of times um, I've, I've recommended that you focus on a, a few strategic keywords that have high potential and really try to get them to the number one or number two position versus focusing on a dozen or two dozen keywords and just hoping to get them all on the first page. Because I think that overall the traffic can be a big difference if you're able to get into the top three positions versus just on the first page itself. And this slide is really designed to speak to that a bit and show you, you know, the differences that each position can make on your actual traffic. Um, for for those of you running a local business, um, there's there's a few different um, there's there's a there's another type of search algorithm that Google's starting to incorporate, and it's designed to be more relevant to local businesses. And this is basically the local results, and what they're doing is they're starting to um, to place on their local maps different restaurants that are relevant to um, the area. And so there's a different strategy involved if you have one or two physical locations, and your goal is to get someone into the door. You can actually start to work on you know, building out your local results and getting on the Google Maps page and trying to get on, you know, very relevant local sites like Yelp and Merchant Circle that will really help to drive traffic so that when someone types in a keyword that's relevant to your business, not only are you showing up on the search engine itself, but you're actually, your location is showing up and you're actually able to drive relevancy for people that potentially would come in to your actual storefront. Um, so just a real quick overview of how search engines work. You know, a big factor in how search engines determine relevant um, websites is just how is just linking and indexing. So, what what a search engine does is they go out and they they crawl the web and they see these sites and they try to determine what is relevant for this specific term in this specific area. And what happens is that if your site has a bunch of sites linking into it for, you know, some really specific terms or really, you know, highly relevant sites, the engine's going to go out and see this site is very relevant for the type of search that we're looking for. So, you know, a big factor in trying to get your rankings up is trying to get relevant sites that would benefit from linking to you to actually want to um, send traffic to your site. And so not only will people potentially find your site on, um, you know, other similar type of websites, but the search engines will then go out and see your site as more relevant in the grand scheme of the of the internet. And so that that is a big factor, and it's important to know that you know, with these links, a search engine is going to be much more likely to find you and much more likely to determine that your your site is very relevant for the types of searches that they want to do. And their entire business model is based around relevancy. So the more relevant your site looks to the search engines, the more likely they're going to want to send traffic to you. Um, 
here, here's another thing that um, I tend to emphasize is a lot of uh, businesses come to me and they, and they want to know, should I, should I set up one main domain for my entire website or should I set up different domains, whether it's by location or service that I offer? And, you know, my, my answer is with one domain, you can have a lot more um, impact on the type of traffic you can drive to it. And you can set up, you know, different subdomains that speak to your different locations or your different services all within one main page. And by doing that, when you start trying to build out, like, a link strategy and trying to get sites to really point traffic to you, you can do it all to one main site, and your efforts go much further than if you were to break up your website into different domains. Um, I don't want to go into too much depth here. I know it's a, it's a bit technical, but just to look at some um, components of Google's ranking al algorithm, um, it's important to note that Google keeps their ranking algorithm very secretive, and that's because they don't want um, businesses to go out and try to manipulate these algorithms. That's how they essentially, you know, build their relevant models, and that's how they essentially build their business model. But, you know, with an interview of, you know, a bunch of different SEOs being surveyed, this is, these are kind of the credence that they gave in terms of what the search engines value. And, you know, the three big ones, or four big ones, is just the authority of the domain. So just building out, you know, the trust and the credibility of the type of site you're, you're doing, the link popularity. So, again, as we had discussed earlier, the amount of links coming into your site and how many sites are actually wanting to point traffic to your site specifically. Um, the anchor text, so this is basically whenever you set up a link and you have a keyword that is relevant to that link, the text that the link um, happens to to display, that's, that's the anchor text. And then the on-page keyword usage. So, for example, if you were running a tax service company and you didn't mention tax services anywhere on your homepage, it would be very difficult to rank for, the, for that type of um, keyword. So those are four of the biggest areas that we see in terms of what can impact how the search engines value your site and the type of credibility they give to driving traffic to your site. Here's um, kind of just, you know, the, the Maslow's hierarchy type of SEO pyramid. And, you know, the goal is to start at the bottom with build out a solid base and then to work your way up and to have, you know, an all-encompassing SEO strategy that can really help to drive traffic and serve as a good outlier for you. And so, you know, at the bottom you have just putting out site maps and getting your internal links right and getting unique content, making sure your URL is crawlable. Um, and when you move up, then you start looking at, you know, how do you do keyword brainstorming and what keywords you want to rank for and how do you build out the different um, tags that the search engines pick up on. Um, you move up a little further and, and then you start looking at, well, how do I get incoming links to my site and how do I make other sites want to point traffic to me to show the, the uh, search engines that I'm relevant. And then on top of that, you look at um, just kind of social media and how, how do I get more viral marketing engagement and how do I make people want to not just come to my site but stay on my site when they get there. And so these are all factors that if you put them together, you can really have a very strong site that, you know, drives traffic and encourages people to want to know more about your business, and it makes it much easier for people to find your business. So in terms of building accessible sites, you know, I don't, I don't want to go into too much in the, on the development side, but I do want to point out a bit of, like, how search engines are looking at your site and what makes it easier for them to crawl your site and makes, the, makes it more likely that they will find your site. And so in terms of the crawlability and link architecture, I mean, you're looking at just, you know, a main page that really um, is very easy, has, has very straightforward internal linking and is really a, a good reflection of your business. And then you have below that the topics of, you know, what kind of services or products do I offer, and then subcategories below that. And then you have the detail in terms of, you know, what, what all that looks like. So by having a site that is very easy to understand and for the you know, and it's very, like, you know, straightforward and follows some, some type of hierarchy structure, it makes the search engines much more likely to be able to find what they're looking for. 
And, you know, the more consistent you make your site in terms of how other sites are being able to be crawled, the more likely that when a search engine starts going out and trying to, you know, send out their web crawlers and determine what's out there for these certain topics, that you'll be found and that they'll be, you know, reflecting you in terms of how, how that looks. Um, duplicate content, right? So the search engines love unique content. Like for a search engine, if they want a t you know, if they want some information on whatever profession you're in, whether you're a restaurant or whether you're professional service, um, they want you to write your own unique content because that helps make their search engine better. And then what they do in turn is when someone pulls up specific information on a subject, they're going to want to direct it to your site because you're actually helping to solve a question or you're, there, you're helping to, you know, make the Internet better by building out unique content. So that's, that's a big area that the search engines look for. And if they're able to find unique content on your site, they're going to be much more prone to wanting to send traffic to your site to get, for people to get their questions answered or to find something unique for what, what it is that they're looking for. And at the end of the day, you know, every business is trying to solve a problem. And so by you being a credible source on that problem, you're going to be much more likely to, you know, drive traffic and convert users into potential customers. Um, we're also, you know, search-friendly URLs. Um, so, you know, you want something that's going to be very easy for um, – and this, this actually is a big factor in terms of how um, search engines go about – finding what, what the what, um, certain websites. So you want just like a very simple single domain, then you want, you know, a very easy folder structure if there's something that you dive into deeper. And then you want ideally the keyword that you're trying to drive. So, you know, if if you're a restaurant if you're a Thai restaurant, you want it to be Thai restaurants in Seattle. Or something that would be a big keyword driver for your actual site that would make people potentially want to or uh, would make the search engine understand that your specific URL is very, very relevant to the types of searches that people are doing for, you know, whether it's African elephants or certain types of restaurants or whatever type of service you're offering. Um, so one thing that you want to avoid is trying to make your your URL too unfriendly. So unnecessary subdomains. Um, dynamic URLs, um, having, you know, just codes in the, in the URL string instead of the actual keyword. These are all things that, you know, they're missed opportunities because they're, they're, you have to have something in there to begin with. And if you get it right, it's going to be more likely that the search engines will understand that your specific site is relevant for the type of search you're trying to get it to be relevant for. So that that's important to understand as well is just that these URLs are um, you know are are a huge factor in how search engines go out and find your site and understand what your site is about. Um, so tags and text, um, you know, some some of these tags actually don't show up on the site itself. What they do is they they're on the back end and they show the web they show the, the search engines exactly what your um, site is about, and it helps them to better determine, you know, what, what it can, um, you know, how it should rank and for what types of things it should rank. And to be honest, it's actually a huge factor. Um, you know, I've seen huge upticks in how certain sites rank based on just how they um, structure their tags and the type of text they put on their site and what that means for the um, search engines. So, a really big thing, and a lot, and one thing that I see very underutilized is the title tags. So the title tag is just basically, you know, what your site is about. So you can see here, like SEO, search engine optimization, and it basically tells the, the um, search engine exactly what your site is about. And the title tag, I think, is actually one of the biggest factors on your site that will help a search engine determine what your site is about. So you want to have very specific keywords that are very related to your business and that you think that, you know, would derive a lot of search volume because it's going to, when you have it in your title tag itself, you're going to have the search engine much more, much more likely to think that your site is relevant for those types of terms. 
and then you have the um, the meta descriptions. So this is a basic description about what your site does. So you know, Seattle-based search engine optimization company serves as a hub for search marketers worldwide. So this is really where you want to tell the search engines what your company does, what it's about, what types of services and products you offer, and so. What you're going to see is by by having you know a very descriptive meta description that is very relevant to your business, the search engines are going to be much more likely to understand what your business is about. So those two areas are actually really really important in terms of how the search engines are crawling your site, and then just and then trying to categorize and classify your site for the types of businesses um, that they're looking for. Um, you know this this can vary, and there's not like a specific um, recommendation, but typically you want the um, the display link to be to be to be um, within the region of what can be displayed on the search engines because it makes it um, you know a cleaner experience. It makes the users better able to understand your site when they're doing their searches, and it makes it um, just a lot more um, searchable for the search engines. So you know, in terms of where um, some of the SEOs recommend typically with um, the title tag, you want it to be around 65 characters, the meta description around 156, and then the URL around 65. So anchor text is essentially, I, we had touched on it a little earlier, um, it's basically just a link that points to a page, an image, or um, some, something else that drives um, to, to a different site. And so that really helps the search engines to understand, you know, what the page is about. So if you have if you have like a link on your site that takes them to a different service or a different product, you want to make sure that the anchor text is very descriptive of what those services and products are, because that's really going to help the search engines to understand. Okay, this page is about this. And then obviously the page copy. So you know, you there's there's a Without without stuffing too many of the same keywords onto the same page, you want consistency and relevancy. And what a search engine is going to do is if they see you mention a keyword five times or ten times on the same page, they're going to be more likely to understand that that specific page is about that topic. So you really want page copy to be reflective of the types of services and products that you have and to be very descriptive in terms of what it is you do and how you do it so that the search engines can better understand how relevant that page is when someone does a search for the types of things that, that it is that you do. And then um, here's another one that I've, I've seen overlooked um, a ton. And, you know, a lot of sites that use, you know, people tend to be visual and a lot of sites use a lot of different types of images. And what happens is, is when you use an image, the search engines aren't able to crawl an image and to see that, you know, for example, this image is an elephant. All they're able to do is read text. So if you put, you know, an alt image tag onto the image itself when you actually put the image up, a search engine can actually crawl your page and determine, oh, well, this image is about elephants. And so they use, they read that text and they use that text, and that's how they determine the relevancy of the page. So it's another opportunity for you to better describe what your services and products are about if you're using images so that a search engine can go out and crawl and understand that this page is relevant for this and here's why. Um, so keyword research. Um, so this, a lot of um, what you're going to do is try to, you know, determine what types of search terms are relevant for your audience and what is going to drive a lot of traffic so that the time you spend on any type of search engine optimization yields, you know, more visitors and more prospects and more customers. Because after all, that is really, um, you know, what what search engine optimization is all about. So whenever I'm looking at what types of keywords I want to identify for a business and really focus on, in terms of doing all of this back end work to drive traffic for these terms. Here are some of the factors that I tend to evaluate. Um, so I want to choose the best words and phrases to target. Um, one thing that I that I tend to tend to really focus on is the competition level. So 
you know, the less competitive a keyword, the more likely it is that we can see traction quicker and the more likely it is that we can get a good ranking. And as I had mentioned, you know, by getting a ranking in the top one or two positions, it can mean a huge difference than getting on the top nine or ten positions. Um, another thing is search volume. So I want to see how many monthly searches um, is a specific keyword actually driving. And so there's some tools that I, I can use where I can really understand, you know, how many, I guess, local searches does Google tend to see for a specific keyword. And that's a big factor because I don't want to spend a lot of time trying to optimize for a search term that has, you know, two searches a month. It's just, it's not going to yield good results for the type of time and energy I put into it. And then the value of the visitor. So how relevant is a term for the business and how likely is it that someone searching on that term will want exact will be an interested customer for the business. And so really it's the volume of the keywords, the val or the, the relevancy of the keyword, and then how competitive is the keyword. And by having a good idea around those three areas, it really helps me to focus on, you know, the types of terms that I'll have that'll have the most impact. Um, with the efforts I put into these types of marketing initiatives. Um, so in terms of the, the search demand curve, um, so basically you have what would be considered a fat head term. So for example, Thai restaurants, like that's, that's, a, that's a very like short term, it's, a, it's very relevant, but as you start to build out longer terms, you find that sometimes, uh, typically the competition is lower, and because it becomes more relevant, the conversion rate is higher. So if you wanted to, to say do a search for, you know, Thai restaurants in Queen Anne neighborhood of Seattle, you know, then you know exactly what kind of search someone's doing and how relevant it is for your business. And so by focusing on longer tail terms, typically you have lower competition and the conversion rates will be higher because the terms will be more relevant. So in terms of what, what we're seeing, here's kind of a breakdown of how, you know, that long tail works against, you know, shorter tails. But what we're seeing is, you know, essentially about 80% of all searches are done at the long tail. So that, that means that you're talking about four to six terms in a keyword string that is actually deriving 80% of all traffic on search engines. So here's, here's what we're seeing in terms of average conversion rates. Um, you can see that, you know, the longer the term, especially, um, you know, once you get to around three or, or four word phrases, those are actually accounting for more relevant types of searches and a, a large volume of searches as well. So that, that would be something to factor in as you determine what types of keywords you want to focus on for your um, SEO strategies. Um, so link building is obviously a really big factor in terms of um, how people are finding your site and also getting search engines to determine um, determine if your site's relevant for certain terms. So the last thing I really wanted to cover on are um, how do you get sites to, to basically link into your site, which in turn, you know, drives more traffic from those sites and makes the search engine understand that your site is more relevant. Um, so the first the first type of link building that I want to cover is just manual link submissions. So you essentially, you know, you do a web crawl for your targeted term. You identify, you know, a group of non-competitive websites. You find, you know, the people who are the webmasters or the people running those sites and you send an email and you say, hey, I saw your site. It's very relevant to, um, to what I'm doing. I'm wondering if you'd mind putting a link to our site so that, you know, I think your users would find some value in what, you know, the type of information on our site. You know, in terms of scalability, it's, it's very time consuming um, and it can take, a, you know, quite a bit of time. The quality of the links are very high, which means that, you know, it would probably take less links for the search engines to take notice and really want, really understand that your site's very relevant. So those are kind of the pros and cons there. Um, the next type of um, link building is just a competitive link research or acquisition. So, you identify a sample of top link sources to competitor sites from directories, and then you look to get your own site included. So, for example, you do a search across, you know, like Yahoo directory, Google directory, and you notice that 
you know, five of your top competitors are all getting links from there. So then you go into the directories yourself and start filling out your own um, profiles and trying to get links um, driven there. Um, you know, in terms of scalability, you know, so it's a little bit more scalable, but still fairly time consuming. Um, the link quality is typically, you know, pretty moderate. Um, you know, these these directories a lot of times um, have a lot of you know relevancy in the search engine size, but they are there's also going to be many more links that they're sending out, and so a lot of times the search engines won't give it quite as much credibility as a site that's only sending out say five or ten links because they're going to see that you know your site must be much more valuable to have you know have a link from a site that isn't readily giving them out as freely. Um, next we have links via embedded content. So you know there are sites out there that have the ability to upload you know like a PowerPoint presentation and then embed a graphical view onto a web page and then each time a user uses this link, you know, this site earns a link. So, you know, th that's something that, you know, if you have a service that people, if you create something that people are readily wanting to use and um, provide value on the web, uh, that's something that people will just automatically pick up on and start to embed links in so that they can use that type of service. Um, so scalable, it's very scalable because um, a lot of times the site owners will, you know, kind of take the ball and run with that themselves. Um, and the link quality can be be really good because you're building something unique that people are wanting to link to. Um, something similar, um, a, you know, people consider essentially a type of link bait. But you know, you, you for example, like OkCupid okay, wrote a blog post illustrating dating advice, and then these posts attract thousands of links over the course of several re several weeks because you know dating is a hot topic and people wanted to, you know, kind of talk about. The, the types of articles that they've driven. So, you know, it's basically a form of creating viral content and then getting other sites to take notice and wanting to link back to it as they discuss that type of um, content. So scalable, um, you know, it, it's kind of a, it's, it's kind of time consuming because you have to um, get some content that's very popular and get it to catch on. But you know, once you do, you know, you can really drive a ton of traffic and links, and um, the quality tends to be pretty good from that. Um, I won't go into too much here. This is a little bit more technical, but you can basically build content online, build technology online, and then just license it out. And a lot of times, you'll drive a ton of links um, by doing that. Um, I don't know how relevant that'd be. Another another form is um, you know exchanges and trades and partnerships. So you know you can you can essentially go out to other search engines or other relevant sites and say, I will if you put a link up on my site, I will put up a link on your on our site, and you can do basically link trading. And a lot of times, other site owners understand the value of links, so they will um, you know be more interested in trying to exchange links with you because they get a value out of getting a link from your site, and you get a value out of getting a link from their site. The next thing is um, paid links. There are actually um, what you would call link brokers, where you can act, where you can go out and buy links, and you can go to different um, different site owners and essentially pay. And it's almost like a media placement, like you pay a monthly fee, and they will link to you as long as you're willing to pay, and that helps to build up your link count as well. Um, I, it's not something that I that I highly recommend, just because. Um, it's not. It's going to be tough to. Um, it's going to be tough to to maintain that over the long term because you know you're, you're going to have limited resources and there's only so many links you're probably going to be able to buy. At the same time, the search engines are getting better about determining you know what sites are offering paid links versus free links, and they're starting to put more penalties around um, anyone actually buying links. So I'm I'm a big advocate of going the natural route and trying to build your links organically, but I do know that some advertisers have been willing to go this route and you know it, it has paid dividends in some cases. So I just wanted to point that out. And then um and then link rec reclamation, um identify pages on competitor sites, contact the site to link to them and suggest your pages instead. So basically trying to point out that you're already pointing to our competitor site. We actually have more unique content. We have a bigger audience. You should use our site instead of their site. 
And so in terms of, you know, scalability, that can be very time consuming, but the link quality can be pretty good. And um, the last thing is, you know, a lot of companies will then build in, bring in link builders, and their only job is to drive links and traffic to their site. Um, and if you're going to go that route, I just wanted to kind of give you a couple quick points in terms of, um, you know, how to, how to really evaluate that and how to, how to you know, look at that. And that's just, you know, maybe start out doing link building together so that they can get a better understanding of, you know, what it is they're trying to do create consistent metrics, so, you know, how many sites do you want to contact, how many links do you want placed, and what a good um, weekly goal looks like. Um, reward like a sales team, so trying to incentivize based off of the links actually placed, and then, um, you know, have really good process and, you know, details around why links didn't happen, what you can do to, you know, make it more of a, more likely to, to acquire links um, and stuff like that. So that pretty much concludes a lot of what I wanted to um, cover. Um, so if you want, we can open it up to some questions if people have that. I haven't seen um, too much come over to the chat. But, um, you know, if people wanted to ask questions, um, you know, I'm, I'm more than happy to answer anything specific to their business or else, um, you yeah, we know, can, we can end early too, depending on what people prefer. Well, I just unmuted everybody to see how much echo we have if somebody wants to type in with a question. I think there's too much echo. I'm going to mute again, and then I'll unmute specific people if they have questions, or you can type your question into the chat as well. Uh, I know one question I had, Matt. Uh, are you able to hear me? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Um, on one of the uh, slides, it talked about um, canicalization. Um, can you can you tell me what that is? Yeah. So it's it's a weird term that. Um, sorry, hang on a second. It's it's a weird term that um, like essentially Google coined. Um, hang on a second. I wanted to um, to get the specific definition of it because I think um, so so for. So basically, um, it's it's a term that um, Google coined, and what it means is um, the way the way that your URL is displayed in Google's um, vantage point. So, for example, let's say that your um, site is you know www.seattle.com. Um, so you can write that URL several ways, right? You can write it www.seattle.com. You can write seattle.com um, http um, dot dot or backslash seattle.com and what happens is you know even though it looks like ideally it's it's the same URL and it's pointing to the same thing um, it actually um, affects the way that Google will pick it up and so um, what will happen is if, if you write your URL in different ways throughout like you know if you write content that le if you write content that leads back to it or whatnot um, Google will will basically almost penalize your site even though it's pointing to the same site because the URL is um, inconsistent. So um, what, what that refers to is you can, you can write some code into, your, um, into the back end of your site so that you know which um, version of your URL to point to and that will help Google to understand um, when they, you know, to pick the best URL when there are several choices. And you know refers back to your your specific home page if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I think I understand. It's kind of like what you were saying about uh, having uh, more than one URL. Except in this case, you're having more than one URL accidentally, and you're kind of dividing your um, efforts, right? Exactly. Exactly. And, so you know, each URL is not as powerful. 
Exactly. And what will happen then is, you know, even though it's essentially pointing to the same page, Google will um, will identify them as separate URLs and will penalize them. I see. It, it'll it will it'll it'll say that it's not pointing to the same URL, and so it okay. divides up the link. All right, I, I've got another question. If nobody else does, um, there was um, one of the slides um, talked about link popularity for a particular page uh, versus the uh, well, I guess was one factor, and another factor was the trust and authority of your main domain. Um, I'm not sure I understand what trust and authority is. W would that just be the link popularity of your home page versus a separate so, page on your site? So what happens is um, Google basically gives um, differ differing levels of um, credibility to different types of sites. They call it um, a page rank. So, for example, if you get a link to your site from CNN.com, you're actually gonna it's gonna help your rankings a lot more than if you got a link from your page to BobsAuto.com. And because what happens is Google has basically these preferences of sites that they see as you know having more credibility, more authority, been around longer, have more content. So they give. Um, they, they, it's almost like getting graded on a curve. So I guess one way to look at it is all links aren't created equal. And if you're able to drive links from a very credible type of site or source, um, it actually will mean more to your SEO strategy over the long run than just you know collecting uh, as many links as possible from sites that um, aren't necessarily as valuable in the eyes of some of those search engines. Okay, so it's similar to link. If I understand this, it's similar to link popularity, except where there's more focus on um, what links are coming in. Um, you know, not not all links being the same, some being more powerful. Yeah, so it's basically a quality over quantity mindset, and so you know, Google essentially um, will value certain sites much higher than other sites, and so by you know getting incoming links from authoritative sites with very um, high cre levels of credibility, um, Google is going to be more likely to, um, you know, to see your site as a very credible, um, you know, result for those types of terms that are pointing to you. Okay. Great. So, Does anybody um, else have questions? And you know, if if not, um, you know, they can feel free. Anyone can feel free to follow up and um, you know, send send emails if there's specific questions that they don't want to ask on the presentation. And you know, I'm ha I'm happy to kind of provide any type of visibility I can around um, certain concerns. Um, again, I tried to keep it fairly high level. I know that some of the stuff may have been um, a bit technical, but you know, it. The, I mean, the main. I guess the main takeaways that I just really wanted is just you know the way you structure your site, the types of tags you use, and then the types of link building you do from there can really make a huge impact in how the search engines are ranking your sites, and the fact that um, there's so much emphasis on the paid um, search versus the organic search when 90% of traffic is being driven by the organic search means that there is a really big opportunity there for any business looking to drive more traffic to their website. Okay, great. So, Matt, the services you provide to uh, clients are? Um, so, you know, I – so just um, – and I probably should have started off with my background in the beginning, but, um, you know, I, I've – I have a um, really strong background in search engine marketing. Um, I've worked directly for a major search engine, Bing.com. Um, I was on, I was with Microsoft um, right when they launched their paid search initiative, and I've worked with literally thousands of advertisers to help them build out both their organic and their paid search initiatives. Um, so really, I mean, the service that I offer is, you know, I can, I can. 
I can help businesses to do anything from um, you know restructure their sites um, to make it more search engine friendly to come up with um, you know a link building strategy to doing all of the search engine optimization myself to um, even helping with the um, the local maps and ensuring that there's a presence um, on on the the maps listings and just really helping to drive traffic and increase ranking so anything having to do with search engines I um, pretty much have done successfully and I have experience to help businesses better understand what they can do um, to drive more traffic to their site. And, and as I uh, understand uh, sort of uh, sort of the essence of the presentation is um, it, it sounds like search engine optimization would be um, maybe your um, well m more important perhaps than um, paid search but page I mean because I do both so um, uh, once you are uh, you know got a good basis in search engine optimization um, I mean paid search is still valid isn't it yeah so there's pros and cons of both um, with with paid search marketing um, essentially you can go after more search terms which is obviously you're going to have more volume and it's going to be um, a quicker um, progress so you you're going to be buying traffic you're going to have the ability to go out create terms um, the big negative is you're always paying for those terms so you have to spend you know you have to compete with everyone else and do a lot of um, you know dedicate a certain amount of money every month to actually paying you know Google and being in Yahoo to actually have that traffic go to your site and no matter how good you get you can get more efficient with the traffic you drive but you're always going to be paying for that traffic um, with SEO, um, you know the, the cons are you're you're not going to be able to drive as many keywords. It's going to be competitive. It's probably going to be more upfront work, and then the results come a little later. But the, the I mean the the big pro is you know by spending the money and the time to do it upfront, you're not going to have to constantly buy that traffic. So I think that one doesn't necessarily preclude the other. I think one can complement the other. Um, my big point with this presentation was not to cut off all search engine marketing uh, or paid search engine marketing. It was that search engine optimization should be a huge focus and should, you know, be part of anyone's search marketing mix. And I think at times it gets overlooked and there's a lot of opportunity there for someone willing to actually put in the time, energy, or even, you know, pay for the resources to actually focus on it. Okay, Matt, great. I got a question. I got a question for you, Matt. Uh, sure. If you can hear me or not? But um, the difference between organic search and paid search for um, consumers or businesses. So if I'm if my business is a B two B only, okay, um, are there has there been any studies done that says organic versus search or search versus organic caters to more of a consumer or a business? So. So it's just different terms, right? So the consumer market and the business market is fairly similar in terms of just how people are doing research. Um, it, so um, if you're if you're doing a B two B search, um, there's there's things you can do to make your searches more um, B two B friendly. But I've I've worked on B two B campaigns, and I know that SEO is still still can be a huge driver in terms of how um, businesses are finding them. Um, just because a lot of times businesses know that the organic searches are going to be very relevant since people, you know, the search engines are putting together complex complex algorithms to determine um, to determine what, um, you know, what, what actually is relevant for the types of searches I'm doing. Um, I don't know a specific breakdown of how this will differ across the business or consumer market. But I know it's just a whole in terms of all searches done across the internet. Ninety percent of traffic is coming from the organic side, and that includes both B two B and B two C. Perfect. That's what I wanted to know. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. So um, yeah, I mean, if there, if there aren't any um, further questions. Our, our time's about up anyways, but you know definitely if there's anything that comes to the top of mind or you know you're doing keyword research and you're trying to figure out what terms are making the most sense, you know you can feel free to follow up and 
I'm happy to try to help out where I can. And, you know, we can also build out strategies on your behalf to help you better understand how to get better rankings as well. Um, uh, Matt, I, I'd, I'd like to uh, just say a word to everybody. If um, I, I'd appreciate it if um, if you could leave reviews for this presentation at uh, uh, at our site, which is smallbusinesswebcast.com. If you just go to the uh, the forum there and uh, under um, I think it's uh, website issues and such, uh, just leave a review of the webcast. Let, let us know what you think. Um, I know some people have come uh, to this webcast from some other places other than small business webcasts, um, but um, we, we do a number of presentations at small business webcasts on various uh, issues for uh, all geared toward the small business owner, uh, and they're all free. Uh, so I'd if you haven't already registered there, I'd encourage you to do that. Uh, we also have recorded webcasts there. As long as you're logged in at smallbusinesswebcast.com and you mouse over the events tab, you'll be able to see the tab for uh, recorded webcasts. So um, I encourage you to take a look at what else we've got coming up there. That's all I got, Matt. Perfect. Well, um, yeah, thanks for, for organizing, and yeah, um, definitely any feedback you give um, helps, and so it really makes a difference in how we structure these and make sure that there's value in them, and you know, the last thing we want is to spend an hour doing this and not have it be relevant and usable for you. So, you know, any any feedback requests you may have um, is just going to help for us to make this better and more relevant in the future. All right, thanks a lot, Matt. Thanks, guys. Yeah, appreciate it. Okay.